An employee of EY, formerly known as Ernst and Young, has been found dead in the office in Australia after a work event. This is what I want to talk about today. So welcome to a new coffee break here on my channel Firm Learning, the place where I want to help you to become successful in the first years of your career. The death of this EY employee is what everyone has been talking about in the consulting community in the last one or two weeks. And in this video, I want to first discuss the circumstances that are known in this specific case. But then second, in a more general way, talk about the work-life balance, the working hours that you can currently expect to find in consulting. I will third talk about travel, how much travel will be expected from you in consulting at this day and age. And then fourth, I will make some conclusions, what in my humble opinion this means for the attractiveness of a consulting career and also how this changed compared to the pre-corona time. Let's start with the first topic, the death of the consultant in Australia. And also to make this clear, I by no means want to imply that the working conditions at EY were actually responsible for the death. This is not what I want to say with this video. But if you do read the associated news reports, there do seem to be some signs that the lady involved was indeed overworked in the last weeks. It was busy season. And if you read Reddit and other places, there were other consultants saying that especially an audit, the sector where this lady worked from July to September. So the busy Busy season where many of the big corporates need to complete and finalize their books. The working hours can be crushing. Some people talked about 70, 80 hours plus that were expected from you. Other big four employees from that region reported that working in these firms felt like running an Ironman, being part of an Ironman contest, where allegedly some seniors would tell you that you should quote unquote either survive or leave. And it was this mindset that people were saying that well, if I needed to work like this, if I did it in the past, then it surely must be fair for you as the junior to now go through the same thing, live through the same hours as well. And in the specific case at EY, there also seem to be some other circumstances adding on it. Apparently, this lady was from India and on a work visa in Australia. This can put additional pressure on people because your visa is usually directly attached to your employment. And if you do not manage to find another employer who sponsors your visa. If you quit your job, you do not meet your visa conditions anymore, which might even lead to your deportation. So to some extent, these people seem to be locked in into their situation. And allegedly, some of the firms are also taking advantage of that by not promoting these people and leaving them on junior positions because they know that they cannot really leave. Now, as many things are still unknown about this specific case, I want to rather abstract the topic to a more general discussion about working hours and work-life balance in consulting. And I will take this from two different sides. First, I will talk about my own humble experiences having worked at an MBB strategy consulting firm in Germany. And then I also did surveys on LinkedIn, on Instagram, collecting many of your inputs, also considering the current situation, which is surely different today after COVID. All of this with the goal to hopefully help you make more informed decisions, whether you want to join consulting or not, so that everyone knows what he or she is getting into. Let me start by talking about what I know the reality has been if you would have worked in a company like BCG, Bain or McKinsey up until the pandemic. So typical work week looked like that, that on Monday morning you would fly into the client often needing to wake up at 4 or 5 a.m. because of course you needed to take one of the earlier flights. Then you would work there, you would fly back to your office location on Thursday evening. And in this time period, usually Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, it was, I'd say, the average to work until midnight or so, often, of course, with breaks at lunch and for dinner and so on. So in these days, if you were able to close your laptop at 10 p.m., that would have been a great day. Thursday was the day where you were flying home. There often you arrived home between 8 and 10 p.m. or so. And here indeed, then afterwards, usually there wasn't much work to be done anymore. So Thursday was already a bit more relaxed in terms of working hours. And then Friday usually was a quite regular day, often until 5 p.m. or 6 p.m. And then people were calling it a day. And this is also, I think, quite important 
there was a big culture of protecting the weekends, of avoiding weekend work. Surely if there was a very important business need, sometimes you were asked to do some work on the weekend as well, but this was definitely just the exception. If by the way you're interested to learn more about how such a typical work week in the life of a consultant at McKinsey BCG Bain looks like, I will insert a video here above where I've discussed this in detail in the past. So now the question is how did this change after the pandemic? And I will talk more about home office and travel in a moment. But just in terms of working hours also when I asked you, the consensus seemed to be that overall nothing really changed. So the hours are more or less comparable. Same thing usually Monday to Wednesday until midnight or so is normal. 10 p.m. would be a bit early after midnight would be late. Then Friday being a bit of a slower day and weekend still being free. Now there are some nuances to this. Some people say well actually got a little bit worse because for instance the Thursday where people used to travel Travel and where this used to be a bit of a slower day as well, now it's just a regular work day for all the people who just work from the home office. So actually this added to the hours. But then on the other hand, some people say, well, on the other hand side, the Mondays, there you don't need to wake up, stand up that early because you don't need to catch a flight that leaves at 6 a.m. or 7 a.m. So you can sleep in a bit longer on Mondays. So this seems to be more or less balancing out. Of course, I'd be interested to hear your opinions as well. Leave a comment if you've had very different experiences than that. So what is my reflection on these working hours? And of course, everyone is different. The effect that hours like this this will have on people might differ quite significantly. So let me just share my personal humble experience. And I must say, I think the most important thing that you just need to have in your mind as a mindset when joining consulting is that during the week, you focus 100% on your work. So you just should not have the expectation that in the evenings you have time to do other things, meet with friends, relax with a Netflix movie, follow, pursue a hobby. This will just not be part of the reality and you need to be okay with that. And for me, I joined consulting fresh out of university. I never really experienced it differently after starting working. So for me, it was just natural. I did feel like I had adapted to this situation quite well. And then of course the good thing which I think also distinguishes consulting from other professions such as investment banking was that the weekends were free. So from Friday afternoon, Friday evening, you had some free time to really recharge the batteries and keep up with your social life. That being said, the hours can be brutal though. They differ also significantly by project. So sometimes you have a tougher project, sometimes an easier project, but especially on the tougher projects. I remember several weeks, sometimes even months, where just worked so much that I just felt so exhausted. And for sure this would not have been healthy for me to continue working in such an environment now for years and years and years. Surely everyone is different, but for me it was clear that at some point I did want to make the transition, make the switch to a more also family friendly environment. Let's talk about travel and working from home before and after the pandemic. And as I just shared before before the pandemic, the schedule looked like Monday to Thursday. You would be usually co-located with the client at the client location. Unless the project location was your hometown, this did mean significant travel every single week. And then on Friday, at least the way I experienced it, it was absolutely okay to just work from the home office. The only exception being that if your project lead was from your office as well, he or she might have asked you to join him or her in the office. And then of course, home office was not possible on Fridays anymore. So what does the situation look like today? And what you have shared with me via the surveys is that actually there's a very significant variance even within the firm. And this depends on first your client needs and preferences what actually the client wants you to do. Second, the preferences of your team lead and also of your partners. And third, to some extent, you might even be able also as a junior to influence these types of decisions. And currently there are three arch types of client service models that are emerging. The first arch type is the old model where consulting teams are still flying in with spend Monday to Thursday with the client on their project. This does not seem to be the norm anymore, but is still used if the client requests this, if the client wants this, or for whatever other reason the partner has discussed with the client that this is the setup that makes sense for the specific project. The second arch type seems to be one that seems to be especially relevant for the MBB firms McKinsey, BCG, Bain, and this is that you're not necessarily co-located 
with your client anymore. Often also the client organizations work remote also from the client side all the employees won't be in the office anymore but instead just the team internally decides to co-locate in any of the offices. And what this means is that then often an office is being chosen at the beginning of the project and then all team members who are not originally from that office need to come to this office every week. So this means that the team members that are based in other offices need to fly in Monday morning, will spend the whole work week with the team in the office and then Thursday evening they can fly out to their home office again and then spend the Friday in the home office indeed. Now of course the office location will often be chosen based on the locations of the team members. So if many team members are already based in one office then likely this is going to be the office where everyone will be working from. So for a part of the team this might be quite convenient but of course this means that all the other people still need to fly in have all the travel that is going on. At least for this part of the team the travel situation did not change much before the pandemic but of course project by project this will likely be mixed up so on average you should be better off if your goal your preference is to not travel that much. Now to the third arch type and this is the fully remote or at least hybrid model where people can decide to spend the whole week from the home office or at least a certain number of days from the home office instead of being co-located in your own office. This seems to be more common for big four firms what you shared with me but some project teams also at MBB firms follow a similar model. But what is the implication of this? Does a higher number of home office days actually improve work-life balance? And here actually I got quite mixed feedback. So on the one hand side I heard that yes this does lead to a better lifestyle. You have a bit more flexibility throughout the day. Surely if you have family you might have the opportunity to have lunch with your kids maybe with your significant other. But there's also a quite big group who told me that actually they perceived the work-life balance to have worsened due to this. For the reason that now all this time that you usually spend in travel also Thursday evenings where you were just at the airport in the airplane this was usually time where you were able to wind down, to just relax a bit, maybe think about some other things, not think about work all day. And then again, once you arrived home, you had more time for yourselves. Nowadays, if you work from home, you can expect to be dialed into video calls from very early morning until very late at night with very little breaks in between. And this in itself is a new level of just mental stress, pressure on your mental health that wasn't there before where you're just sitting in the team room having eye to eye conversations, spending time maybe at the coffee machine with the client. These are types of interruptions and breaks which are far less common today. In addition to that before the pandemic video calls weren't really a thing. Yes you often had conference calls but these were usually telephone conferences so voice only. And this then adds to just an additional level of stress where you need to be sitting in front of the camera managing your looks and appearance. You cannot just stand up and do something else while being dialed into a telephone conference and all of this just adds an additional layer of stress to the reality of work. And I can personally totally relate while I absolutely understand the advantages of video conferences. It is surely much more comfortable and convenient to just talk via voice without an image of yourself visible at every single point in time. So let's now move to the last section and this is my reflection what all of this will mean for the attractiveness of a consulting career. And I'd say there are some positives and some negatives. Let's start with the positives. First of all the work from home model adds flexibility to your schedule. You will have more time with your family potentially with your kids. I do think that this is a positive step towards making the consulting career more family friendly. In addition you will have some flexibility in the staffing process to actively choose for projects for studies that meet your preferences. Also when it comes to being co-located to the working model all of this gives you agency and helps you select the projects that best meet your needs. But there are some negatives as well and for the reasons discussed earlier I'm a bit worried that working from home in consulting will lead to even more mental health issues, to even more pressure on the people sitting in front of the screen from early morning until late at night being dialed into one video conference after video conference is surely not the healthiest way to spend your day. Second I'm afraid that the increase 
increasing trend of working from home takes away one of the most significant learning opportunities that are associated to working in consulting and these are regular client interactions. So in the old model you spend Monday to Thursday almost the full week together with your clients. You will sit together with them every single day, have informal conversations with them, build relationships with them. And in my humble opinion this was one of the most significant learning aspects of the career in consulting. And sure if you work from home you will still have video calls with these people but it's just not the same thing. And I know some people might disagree but also looking at my current role as an executive in a startup company if you talk to clients just via video calls and compare this to clients you have met face to face in workshops and so on the difference of the relationship is so significant. I'm afraid that a lot of these types of experiences and learning opportunities are now missing. While in this video we talked a lot about the negative sides of working in consulting. I do want to stress that I look back at my time in consulting in a very very favorable way. My time in consulting was absolutely instrumental to both my personal and my professional development. Yes the hours can be tough but you will also grow significantly with the experience. Now if you are currently working in consulting as well let me know in the comments whether all of this matches your current experiences and of course if you took any value out of this video at all hit the like button for the YouTube algorithm and subscribe. Big big thanks to all the members of the channel as well. My name is Heinrich. I release videos every single week. All the best to you and bye bye.